What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of Returnal and try to explain to the best of my ability what Returnal is, what it's like to play Returnal, and you know, should you buy it honestly? Because I know there's a lot of questions people have about this game because a lot of people are unsure about it, people are on the fence, and they've heard a lot of things about it, whether negative good or what negative good or uh, intimidating so I'm gonna try to answer all of those questions and explain this game which isn't really very easy to do because there's not one game that you can really use to describe Returnal right there's several games that you can use to describe it but not necessarily just one game that's like an exact match of Returnal right so what is Returnal as we know it's a game made by Housemark, right and it's a PlayStation exclusive that just dropped on Friday. And if I had to describe it, I I would say it's a third person sci-fi bullet hell psychological rogue light or rogue like shooter with some horror elements. But other games you could use to describe Returnal, I I, I think most people would say it's like a mixture of Doom, Hades, and maybe some other bullet hell games. Um, if you ever played a game, this indie game called Fury, I would say that that Returnal is very similar uh, to that game, um, except Fury was just pretty mainly melee based, and Returnal is third person over the shoulder, and it, it and it's a shooter, right? So I actually would say Fury is the closest thing to what Returnal is. If you haven't checked out Fury, you know you can go look that up. That's F U R I, by the way. Great game, right? Loved it. Um, so I would use those games to describe Returnal. And I would say on top of all the descriptors that I gave it earlier, I would say this is a very risk versus reward versus luck game, right? And I'm gonna explain why, what I mean by the risk versus reward part. But as far as the luck goes, the luck is because this is a an RNG game, which is a random number gen generated game, uh, because it's procedure it's procedurally generated, right? Every run, every time you die, it's not going to be the same experience as before. So, let me explain Returnal. Let, first of all, no, let me give let me give you my my first my, how, how I feel about the game. Returnal is a very good game. It's not amazing. It's a very good game. I'm really enjoying it, right? I think the gameplay is addicting. I think it has good mechanics. Uh, the visuals are okay. It's not going to win any awards for the best visuals or anything like that. It probably has the most spectacular use of particle effects, I would say. But as far as the actual graphics and visuals, it's not bad by any means, but it's not going to win any awards for visuals or graphics. But the gameplay is fun. It's addicting. It's it's challenging, which you all know I love challenging games. So that's the, probably the best part about this game is the reward of actually getting through each biome and, and taking on each boss. So, um, And as far as the, uh, the story goes, I think the story is... The story has me intrigued, right? Because it's one of those things where it, it has you guessing as you go through the levels, right? It's giving you clues as to what's truly going on in the story, but you probably won't be able to fully know until until the very end. But the concept is that there's an, an astronaut, her name is Celine. Uh, she goes against her orders and lands on this alien planet uh, called Atropos, I believe is how they pronounce it. And pretty much them tying the story, uh, House Mark tying the story into the gameplay of what a roguelite or roguelike is, she comes across dead bodies, which are pretty much her dead bodies, which is kind of ingenious, um, an ingenious way to tie it into the story because that's what this genre is about, you dying and then coming back. And, th and so they've intertwined that into the story, right? She she land as far as she knows she lands on this alien planet uh, for the first time, but she encounters a corpse that is hers. So I'm not gonna go um, farther than that, but that's the simple concept into the story. So let me let me get back into explaining the gameplay loop and the gameplay cycle of Returnal because you know that that's funny because the game actually is a loop in a cycle. Anyway, um, 
So let's talk about exactly what you do in this game. You explore the biome, which as I said, is the hub area, right? There's six biomes as far as I understand in this game. And I, I've been live streaming this game and I'm currently in biome four, I believe. I just beat the third biome and the third biome boss. So I'm so I'm in biome four. So I think you could say I'm, I'm more than halfway through the game, I would guess. Uh, and I, but this, you know, even though I'm more than halfway through, this is still my first impressions. Take that for what you will, right? So you explore the biomes. Um, the most important thing in exploring the biomes is collecting gear. Gear, it, uh, uh, gear consists of uh, parasites, augments, artifacts, data cubes, calibrators, and weapons. And I'm not going to get too deep into all those things, but just know that it pretty much breaks down to be buffs. This game, this is a very risk versus reward system. As, as I said before, I already explained the luck part, but the risk versus reward part of the game comes in uh, because of malignant entities and, and malfunctions. So let me, just to explain simply what that is, malignant entities can be consumables or containers, for example, right? And in these containers, which are malignant, they, the container, for example, could have an artifact in there. Of course, you don't know what's what exactly the artifact does or what is in the container, but obviously it's some type of reward. You don't know before you open it, right? So let's say in, in there, it's an artifact that increases your protection by 10% or it's a parasite that auto repairs your health when it's low. But here's the risk when it comes to these malignant entities there's a chance that your suit will get a malfunction. And it tells you what's the, what the chances are of your suit getting a malfunction before you open it, right? It could be, it'll tell you like low, medium, high, or very high as the chance of getting a malfunction. Malfunctions can be anything. Once again, you don't know what the malfunction is or even if you'll get the malfunction before you open it. You just know there's a, there's a chance of a, of a malfunction and you don't know what the malfun malfunction is, right? Malfunction could be, for example, you're not able to pick up Silphium, which is health items, right? I actually got that malfunction. Or it could be you're uh, you're not able to you're not able to uh, pick up any more weapons. Or every time you pick up a weapon, you're going to take damage to your to your health bar. It could be any one of those things. But it's typically something bad, typically something that sucks. It could I, I've gotten one that you'll take extra fall damage um, or you'll deal 30 percent less uh, weapon damage if you're in the air. It could be any one of those things. It's, it's completely random. But there is a way to remove malfunctions. There's, there's several ways. Uh, one is you can, for example, um, get a consumable. You can buy a consumable that will remove all the malfunctions. You can also find those. Sometimes uh, enemies drop them, I believe. But the game gives you a direct way um, to remove malfunctions, and that is to achieve certain tasks. Once again, it will be random. It could be go melee three enemies, or go find an artifact, or go use a consumable, right? It could be any one of those things. Once again, it's completely random. This game is luck, risk, and reward, right? But there is a there once if you do if you don't want to take the chance of getting a malfunction, one thing you can do is cleanse the malignant entity before you open it. To do that, you have to use ether. Ether is a rare resource in the game, so that's kind of like a breakdown of what the mechanics are in Returnal. So let me return back to the, you know, the gameplay loop and the gameplay cycle a little bit. As I said, you explore the biome, you're collecting all this all this gear, you're weighing the, the risk versus reward factors and everything like that. Um, you're fighting all these enemies, you know, all these aliens in, in the game, of course. They drop uh, obelites, I believe is how you pronounce them. Obelites are just the, uh, the currency in the game that you can spend on fabricators. Fabricators, it's just pretty much the, the the store in the game, but it's not like an infinite uh, supply of items in fabricators. But the most important thing, let me let me make sure I say this: the most important thing in Returnal 
is your health. There's you you'll get chances to increase your weapon damage, increase this, increase that. The most important thing is health and your suit integrity. Suit integrity is just your health capacity. To increase your suit integrity, here's what you have to do, right? For one, you have to have full health. Because if you pick up Silphium and your health is not full, all it will do will is that it will just restore some of your life. But three every time you pick up three pieces of Silphium, when your health is full, then it will increase your overall health capacity. And on screen, you should probably see uh, my life bar and you'll see the, the that it's, you know, that there's essentially two different life bars. So not taking any damage from enemies is important because then you'll be able to use this, these, the Silphium, the, the, the health vials to increase your overall health instead of just restoring your lost health. Hope I explained that well, right? So that's another important part of the game. Um, there are side paths in this game, which could have enemies. It could have, uh, it could have, you know, some gear in there for you. It could have a bunch of things. You could think of those like almost like tombs, right? So, little side tombs for you to get items, um, kill some enemies, whatever, right? It could be anything in there. At the end of each biome, there is a boss. So that that'll be the that's the boss fight, you know, that's and, and in my experience, the boss fight is not really what you need to worry about. The boss fight is typically not the hardest part. The hardest part is getting to the boss. That's really the hardest part in this game. So when you beat the boss, when you get to the end of each biome and you beat the boss, you'll get a piece of like permanent gear. Per now, in Returnal, you lose pretty much everything you gain if 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 you die, right? except ether and your permanent equipment. Permanent equipment is are, are things that the game gives you so that you could access places that you typically couldn't before because that's the Metroidvania aspect of this game. I guess you could have included that um, as a genre in this game too. For example, um, grappling hook. There's a grappling hook in the game. so. If you die, they're not gonna take the grappling hook, hook away from you. Also the melee, there's like a sword. Th th this is stuff you need to get past certain areas in the game, so they're not gonna take it away from you. It's completely tied to accessing certain areas, but everything else pretty much, you're gonna lose if you die. Before you beat Biome 3, right? Let's say you get to Biome 2 or Biome 3, before you beat Biome 3. If you die, the game will put you back at the very start of biome one, but you don't necessarily have to beat all the enemies. You don't definitely don't have to beat the bosses anymore. They stay dead, but you don't necessarily have to beat all the, all the enemies throughout the level. You could just run past them. You know, you can just run past them and just get back to biome two or three. And the game gives you a shortcut typically. Um, to get there a little bit faster. Once again, that seems to be completely random depending on how they generate the map on that on that death run. It benefits you to actually run through that biome to get the gear, to get gear before you get to that, uh, before you get to the next, before you get to that biome that you died at. Let me try to explain this. Cause like I said, explaining this game is, is kind of hard. So. You get to biome three, that's the biome that you're up to. Okay, you die, right? Everything resets, even your health, of course, right? So you have nothing. You have no parasites, no augments, no artifacts, no data cubes, no calibrators, no, no weapons. Your health is completely reset, right? But biome three is obviously harder than biome one. So how do you prepare better for biome three and, and the challenges in biome three? You have to go through biome one, collect as, as much, of, of that gear that I just named so that biome three is easier for you. So even though you don't have to do that, it's actually the best way to get past the biome that you might be struggling on. And that's where this game kind of gets people because yeah, for example, for biome three, what I had to do was I ran through biome one and let's say that took me in ha a half an hour to do. Okay. I buffed my health, I got all these buffs and everything like that, got all this gear in biome one. Went back to biome three. 
right? Biome 3, because I'm being very careful, took me, let's say, an hour and a half to get through. And luckily, on that run, I got through Biome, biome 3 and beat the boss in Biome 3. But, let's say I would have died on the boss. I would have literally wasted the 30 minutes I, I did in Biome 1 collecting all that stuff, and then the hour and a half that I spent in Biome 3 just getting to the boss. So that would have been two hours of progress completely lost. That is where this game can be a bitch, is when you invest all of that time and if you die. That's where this game will get people and that's where a lot of people probably won't end up beating it. It's not necessarily you know, the, the difficulty of the enemies or the difficulty of the boss because, like I said, the bosses aren't even that hard. It's the lack of checkpoints. It's the fact that you have to go back to, to the start. And it's it's the waste of of, of time and, and, and the progress you lose if you die. That's what it is. I hope I did, I hope I did a, a good job explaining uh returnal to all of you like i said it's it's a pretty complex game in, in that way to to explain once you, once you when you play it it's very simple and, w and when you understand it when you play it but explaining it is is kind of a little bit difficult um i do want to give a give a shout out to house mark mark for the the map design the mini map design uh because it's very easy to read and that's something that we should applaud them and appreciate because if you played a game like returnal for ex a, a game like uh, control, for example, uh, the map was terrible. You damn near couldn't read it. And and obviously, since this this game uh, is very randomized, uh, each time you die, you need to be able to uh, read the mini map and to know exactly where you're going. And it, the game is vertical, so they did a an amazing job at that. I explained, you know, is the game as hard as they say? Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard because of like how it's un it's more unforgiving than it is actually hard. But I will say, even though you lose most of your things if you die, I believe what you learn is more valuable. Okay, for example, in Biome 3, there's these damn, you know, aerial robots that have these damn missiles. And they're, 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 com they're bitches, bro. They're, they're hard, right? But at least you learned about them. And for next time, you understand how to deal, how to deal with them. There's at least that factor of it. Um, is the game worth $70? And this is going to be the last question I answer. That's always going to be subjective. That's, you know, that's a question that people have been asking, asking me, um, during my live stream. That's, that's not a question I can answer for you. I can answer it for me though. And if you trust my opinion, then I guess that's your answer. What I personally say based on what I've played even, and, and I'm enjoying the game. I think the game is very good. Uh, as I said it, it, at the very beginning. Would I say this game, based on what I played, is worth $70? No. If I had to put a price, a perfect price, at launch for Returnal, I would say $50. Take that for what you will. Right? I don't know what that translates to you as, but I would say the game is worth $50. I guess that means if the game, the first sale this game has, yes, I say it's worth that first sale under $70. So... I hope I answered questions. I hope I explained what Returnal is and, and how it is to play it. Um, I'm sure there's stuff I didn't touch on, like the enemies and everything like that. I haven't gone in, in depth into the enemies. Yes, there's uh, a lot of different enemies. Uh, you know, a big part of the game is, is dodging um, projectiles. As we know, it's a bullet hell game. You know, of course, you have to use dash. Uh, to avoid a lot of it the, the, the dash has invincibility frame so if you you can dash directly through uh projectiles pretty much you don't only have to dash to avoid them you can dash right through them and, and they won't hurt hurt you um so yeah uh and yeah i hope i like i said i hope i explain the game the best the best i can um it, it has some decent platforming parts uh good map design even though even though it's completely randomly generated um yeah appreciate y'all listen listening um hit the like button follow me on twitter if you haven't uh hit the hit the uh the 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 notification bell if you haven't already so you can know anytime i live stream or anytime up i upload a video 
and we will be talking about Returnal and giving our thoughts on it this uh, tomorrow, because I'm up uploading this on Saturday. We'll be uh, talking about it tomorrow on Weapon Will Podcast, and we will have a special guest, so make sure you check that out. All right, I'm out of here. I'll check y'all later. Peace.